Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be to God on high. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son did manifest himself to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open, we pray thee, the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work. Through the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, 
I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Today's reading is the fourth psalm. Let us read responsively by half verse. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You mortals. How long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. Tremble then and do not sin. Offer the appointed sacrifices. Many are saying, oh, that we might see better times. You have put gladness in my heart. I lie down in peace, and at once I fall asleep. The epistle is John's first letter. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, We are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him. For we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness sin is lawlessness you know that he was revealed to take away sins and in him there is no sin no one who abides in him sins No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is my I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All the kids come forward. I think we only have two today in the, this congregation. Layla and Jolene over here. morning. How are y'all? Good. Happy Easter. 50 days of Easter, remember? We are on the third Sunday in Easter, still celebrating this wonderful and glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And that affects us today, you know. It's not just something that happened 2,000 years ago. Jesus is still alive, and he said he's going to clothe us with power from on high, with the Holy Spirit. You know, it was kind of cool this morning, wasn't it? Did you wear a coat today? Anybody wear a coat? Yeah, long sleeves. Well, that's, you know, it was cool. I don't wear coats very often, but um, when it gets really cold, like the winter storm we had, I had a coat on just about every day because we didn't have electricity. So when it gets warmer, we take our coats off, right? What, What piece of clothing do you wear all the time? Something like socks, maybe? I mean, not like at night, you know, but all every day, right? You wear socks most of the time. I mean, someone like Jim Medford, they, he doesn't wear socks, but, but, but you wear socks most of the time, right? Yeah, all, not all the time? All the time. Well, that's the, this, this Holy Spirit that we've been clothed with, that God has given us, we don't take the Holy Spirit off. The Holy Spirit was given to each of us at our baptisms, And we keep the Holy Spirit wrapped around us, inside us, above us, below us, everywhere around us so he can give us what we need. Like a coat gives us warmth, socks give us gives us warmth and comfort for our feet. The Holy Spirit gives us strength and guidance when we need it the most. He's always there for us. And so how do we keep the Holy Spirit on? How do we not take the Holy Spirit off of ourselves? We keep praying, don't we? We let, the Holy, we let the Holy Spirit, we talk to the Holy Spirit, God, because the Holy Spirit is God, right? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. So we talk to the Holy Spirit, pray to the Holy Spirit to give us what we need to help us glorify God. Remember I said last week not to 
give us a brand new bicycle, even though the Holy Spirit might do that at times if he thinks it might help us in our Christian life. But the Holy Spirit is here to help us grow as disciples of Jesus, to help us grow as Christians so that we can do what God created us to do, to be the kind of person he wants us to be, loving God with all our heart, loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. That's what the Holy Spirit helps us to do because I can't do it by myself. I'm always going to mess up. You can't do it by yourself, but the Holy Spirit can help us do it. And that's why he gives himself to us. That's why God gives himself so that we can be just like God wants us to be. And we have to keep practicing and we have to keep praying and the Holy Spirit's going to just going to keep on guiding. He's not going to take himself away from us. He's going to stay with us and love us and hold us and embrace us when we need those things. And he's going to walk right with us all the way, all the way to heaven, because we're all going to heaven for those who love the Lord and believe in the Lord. So we don't forget that, okay? So important. That's why God created us, okay? Okay, God can sit over here, and I'm going to go over here and talk to the big... Oh, thank you, Jason. Oh, you're strong, buddy. Oh, I'm sorry. So today we have our youth confirmation class at 1 o'clock. I remember many years ago when I was, in, I mean many, many years ago, when I was in youth confirmation, we had to memorize, maybe you did too, we had to memorize, in the Episcopal Church anyway, we had to memorize the the creed, uh, the Apostles' Creed, the Lord's Prayer, the Ten Commandments, those sorts of things. We had to memorize parts of the catechism, which then were back in the, in the back of the prayer book. And then we had to be prepared to, to recite these things in front of the bishop when he came for confirmation. Now, this didn't happen to my class, but one bishop told the story that the class was all lined up when the bishop came so that they could recite the creed. I believe in God the Father, almighty maker of heaven and earth, Robbie began. And in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, Susie, said next, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, said Timmy, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried, said Molly. He descended into hell, said Jim. The third day he rose again from the dead, said Margaret. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, said Billy. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead, said Jill. And then this long silence, just, just like that. Finally, Timmy spoke up and he said, Bishop, sir, the boy who believes in the Holy Ghost is not here today. <laughs> Bill, did you do that? <laughs> one, com one confirmation student was asked to, lend, to list the Ten Commandments in front of the bishop. In any order, the bishop said. So the boy out loud said, three, six, <laughs> one, eight, seven. Now, you'll be pleased to know that I know them in order. One, two, three, four, five, six. Anyway. I know. One of my favorite movies of all time is one, of the mo is one that most of you have probably seen several times over, maybe. The movie is called Steel Magnolias. And for those of you who have seen it, I know that you will agree with me when I say that it is a movie which draws out every possible emotion that a person can have. It has the capacity to, to draw laughter and joy, especially when we watch this crazy, cranky, bitter old woman played by Shirley MacLaine become a character who is, by the end of the show, much loved by the audience. But no one likes her in the beginning. Everyone avoids her. She's sarcastic and rude and selfish. 
but always she has this spark of humor found within her lambastic remarks to other people. And there's one particular remark I like, well, I like a lot of them, but this one in particular in the movie where she turns to this person who has just made some comment about her being crazy, and she says, I'm not crazy. I've just been in a bad mood the last 40 years. <laughs> Sad thing is, I think I know people like that. The movie also draws emotions of fear and anger. The loving and sometimes controlling mother, played by Sally Fields, finds herself in a very fearful situation. Her only daughter, played by Julia Roberts, is a diabetic, and the, doctor is, the doctors told them that if the daughter ever tried to have children, it would only endanger her life. But in the movie, the daughter gets married and she finds herself with child and she goes to her mother not with distress but with this, what seems to be her this, this joyful news but her mother Sally Fields becomes angry becomes afraid and the mother and the daughter they begin to shout and they begin to cry and they really express their emotions to one another until Julia Roberts with tears in her eyes says but mother can't you understand what I'm feeling? I want a baby, and I would rather have 30 minutes of wonderful than a lifetime of nothing special. I would rather have 30 minutes of wonderful than a lifetime of nothing special. And then there is grief and sadness because the daughter does indeed die, but only after she has had two or three years worth of wonderful with her baby and her husband. And at the grave, the group of best friends from the beauty salon, including the cranky old lady, they gather to console the grieving mother, Sally Fields. And one of these friends is Daryl Hannah, who by this time in the movie has become somewhat of a religious fanatic, almost to the point of being brainwashed. But by the time she finishes speaking to the mother with genuine love from her heart about her faith and about her belief that life comes from death, the audience begins to offer her a much deeper respect. And through the offering of this faith from her friends, the mother is allowed to express her anger and her fear and her grief and her doubt and at the end, laughter and joy. Now, I know this is only a movie, but it is a movie which portrays real life for every one of us. Because every single person in this congregation, whether you be young or old, whether you be a student or a professional, rich or poor, black or white, it doesn't matter. Every person here has to deal with the realities of life those things that are presented to us in life. And sometimes life is easy because we're able to experience joy and happiness because we delight in the gift of relationship, of friendship, the gift of love to each other. We, 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 we rejoice in springtime and in youth and in things of that nature. But there are other times when we find ourselves growing up or being in the midst of a very confusing world a world filled with death and disease and sickness and grief and violence and any other evil that might come our way. A world in which we often find ourselves afraid of what might come next or afraid of what might not come next or afraid of the present or maybe even afraid of yesterday. And somehow and for some reason, it seems that we are expected to know automatically how to deal with all of these fears being presented to us, with these uncertainties of life, as if we had what Dr. Seuss might call a pink and green polka dot built-in fear reducer or something like that. But we don't have that, do we? It doesn't work that way. Because when we become afraid, when we become sad, when we become lost, and confused, our hearts begin to grow very, very heavy. 
almost to the point of feeling that the next breath I take will become so soggy with those inside tears that I won't be able to breathe the next breath at all. And this feeling seems at the time as if it will never go away. But it does. It eventually goes away. It takes time. In reading today's gospel lesson, we find it to be the same story as last week's lesson, the lesson Deacon Jennifer preached on. Except last week it was the gospel of John. This week it's the gospel of Luke chapter 24 very same Easter evening, the very same upper room, the very same story of Jesus coming in through the locked doors, the very same offering of his peace to his disciples, the very same offer to look at the scars on his hands and his feet. We find that the disciples of Jesus were experiencing the same kinds of emotions and feelings that I just spoke about in the movie and about in our own personal lives the emotions of anger and doubt and fear and grief and in the end, laughter and joy. Before these disciples witnessed the resurrection appearance of Jesus, they were full of doubt and fear. They didn't know what to do next. They didn't understand what had just happened. All they knew was that their master, their teacher, their Lord had just been crucified and now he was dead. Now, what if it were you or I who were one of those first disciples? We'd given up everything, our family, everything, to follow Jesus after we had seen him speak with authority, after we had seen a certain sense of peace and joy flow from his presence to those around him, after having spent three years with him, having witnessed his teaching and his preaching and the healing powers that were making people whole. Would we too have become confused and fearful if we had seen him hanging there on that cross, suffering in agony and finally dying? I don't know about you. I know I would have experienced those emotions. But look what happens next. Jesus enters the room. Even though the doors were locked, it seems impossible for him to get in. In his resurrected body, Jesus enters the the room and he says to those whom he loved my peace I give to you and he breathes on them they receive what the Holy Spirit a mini Pentecost experience immediately they find themselves rejoicing the fear the anxiety the uncertainty it's all gone and so we say so what that's them That's not us. That was 2,000 years ago. That doesn't help my hurt right now. When I'm afraid or confused or anxious about what life has to offer, what good does it do to me that Jesus breathed on his disciples? I'm not sure I would want anyone breathing on me anyway, to be honest. Or do I? The book of Genesis tells us that God breathed into our nostrils the breath of life, and we became living beings. The Gospel of John tells us that Jesus breathed on the apostles and they received new life. They were reborn. They became new beings. The breath of God is the source of my life, your life. Sometimes breath, remember, is translated in Hebrew as spirit or wind. The spirit of God is the source of our lives. And it has been through the breath of God or the spirit of God in the lives of other Christians that I've oftentimes been able to overcome my fears and my anxieties, my confusion. God becomes very real to me through the love and friendship of other people through you, my Christian brothers and sisters. And through these relationships, I have been reminded over and over again that God is indeed a powerful God and that the risen Lord does come to us in various ways and breathes on us his presence, his peace, his Holy Spirit. Yes, the fear, the anxiety, the confusion, I suppose 
will always be a part of our broken lives in this world. But if we take the risk of reaching out, receiving, of inhaling this breath of God in whatever way, whether it be from someone, someone we love or someone who loves us, or whether it be found in the sacrament of his body and blood or the, or the word preached, the gospel itself. However, if we take that risk, I guarantee you to turn a phrase around we will have a lifetime of wonderful with only 30 minutes of nothing special. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand together and let us reaffirm our faith as it is found in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And we believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And we believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world, devoutly kneeling. Almighty and ever-living God, we are taught by thy holy word to offer prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people. We humbly pray thee to mercifully receive our prayers, inspire continually, we pray, the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy. We pray thee to lead the nations of the world into the way of righteousness, and so to guide and direct their leaders, especially our president, the United States Congress, our governor, all of our elected and appointed representatives and judges, that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. Grant that our leaders may impartially administer justice, uphold integrity and truth, restrain wickedness and vice, and protect true religion and virtue. Lord, in thy mercy. Give grace, Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially Foley Beach, Archbishop of the Anglican Church in North America, Clark, our bishop. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Bay Area Anglican and Mike Story, their rector. Our clergy, Father Stan, Oscar, Bill, Larry, Nazir, and Michael. Deacons, Jennifer and John, lay pastor Bob that by their life and teaching they may proclaim the true and life-giving word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all, pe all thy people give thy heavenly grace and especially to this congregation here present, that with reverent and obedient hearts we may hear and receive thy holy word and serve thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives. Lord, in thy mercy. 
We beseech thee also to bless those who celebrate the anniversary of their birth. Noah Gerber, Danny Winkler, Catherine Lamb, Shane Deer, Marlene Van Horn, Liz Percy, Rebecca DeSano, and Ethan Settles. Lord, in thy mercy. Prosper, we pray, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom throughout the world. Let your blessings be upon our Equipping the Saints initiative and strengthen us to fulfill thy great commission, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey all that thou hast commanded. Lord, in thy mercy. We ask thee in thy goodness, Lord, to comfort and sustain all who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially Ben Music, Nancy Keeson, Matthew Herbison, Mickey Matkin, Allison Hall, Patsy Gear, Mary Karen Davis, Linda Flavin, LeVon French, Louis Wang, Gail Cahill, Bob Boyce, Clayton Melanson, Jim Maxey, and Bob Brooks. And for all others who've asked the prayers of our parish family, we pray for Richard Lewis in the hospital. We pray for healing in his body and for answers to his problem. We pray also for continued protection over St. Timothy's against this virus as we worship and have activities. We pray, Lord, for the restoration of our building in a rapid manner. We also pray, Lord, for those with child, for Sarisa, Lauren, Kristen, and Ayele. We pray for all unborn children. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before, you, before thee, Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially Jim Boyd. For our loved ones who have gone before us, we pray for all men and women in the armed services who have given their lives for the cause of our freedom, for all first responders who have died in the line of duty and caring for others. And we ask thee to give us grace to follow their good examples, that rejoicing in their fellowship, we may share with them in thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we earnestly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways. To the glory of thy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning again. Just a few announcements today. Um, did we see Deacon John a while ago? Is he? Okay, so he will have his class in the choir room right after this service. Um, youth confirmation today from 1 to 5 in the youth building back in the back. Um, Daughters of Honor will have their study class in the choir room on Tuesdays at 1030. Any lady in the parish who's interested in the daughters? more than welcome to attend um, this coming Tuesday at 1230 if they have 10 or more people 
there will be a bus leaving here for the 50 plus fellowship to, to go over to Old Town Spring for Wunshi's Brothers Cafe and for just kind of walking around Old Town Spring. And then the bus, of course, will bring you back like $5 and then you pay for your own lunch. So if you're interested, um, let Nancy Kisa know she's not here right at this service, but let, let her know or the front office and we will make sure you get signed up for that. Uh, Tuesday night, M&M's Women's Ministry Team will have their team meeting on Zoom at seven, uh, again at 7 p.m. If you're interested in, in that, ladies, uh, call the office and we'll give you the Zoom number. Uh, Wednesday, normal activities, 12 noon Eucharist, 6 o'clock Eucharist. We do have 5.30 rosary this uh, one time a month, uh, this coming Wednesday. Uh, no dinner because of what's going on back there with the construction. Um, stay will be in the youth building. The children will have their education online and in person in the choir room. And the equipping the saints will be right here from 6.45 to 7.45. Uh, and everyone is invited in the parish who would like to come. Thursday, normal Bible study programs and Saturday morning parish clergy at 8.30. Uh, birthdays, anniversaries, please come forward for a blessing if you desire one. Anybody in here today? Nope. We had two or three at the early service. Okay. Be that way. <laughs> Be that way. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor unto the Lord.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world, who by his death has destroyed death and by his rising to life again has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying. Let us pray. All praise and glory is thine, O God, our Heavenly Father, for in thy tender mercy thou hast given thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. And now, O merciful Father, in thy great goodness, we ask thee to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For on the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these holy gifts the memorial thy Son commanded us to make, remembering his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and his promise to come again. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and thy whole church may obtain forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present to thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice. We humbly pray that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, 
be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction and be made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy because of our many sins to offer thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for thee and feed on him in thy hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
behalf of our late pastor, Bob Brook, who had open heart surgery this past Thursday. Deacon Jennifer and Valerie are going this week and we'll have other clergy going for the next few weeks until Bob recuperates to Woodland to take the sacrament to preach and to, and to be a pastor to those people. Let us pray. O God, whose fatherly care reaches to the uttermost parts of the earth, we humbly beseech thee graciously to behold and bless uh, the people at Wood Glen whom we love, now absent from us. Deacon Jennifer and Valerie, in the name of the congregation here at St. Timothy's, I send you forth bearing holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we share one bread and one cup. For those people, the congregation online, we will say the prayer for spiritual communion. Let us pray. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every communion table and altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is this day celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may continually be united to you and since I cannot now receive you with my own faith community, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate me from you or you from me. May I live, serve, and die in your love. Amen. Let us pray the post-communion prayer together. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us through this sacrament of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are true members of the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy salvation. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.